Hey everyone, Ashok here. Welcome to another tutorial on data science training. Today's topic is Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter is an open source software, very popular, and uh, you can do coding on different languages. Particular to data science, we can use Python or Spark, and we can also do a lot of documentation in an interactive way using Jupyter Notebook. So this tutorial is going to cover installation and the basic commands to get going in Jupyter Notebook. Okay, let's get started. Alright, so I would start with Windows uh, installation. I'll do from scratch and then we'll move on to Mac and we'll proceed with the further training. Alright, so this is my another computer connected via um, remote desktop meeting I'm going to find the best way to install Jupyter for data science is to install anaconda distribution of Python which is Python for data science so I'm just going to type in anaconda download and You can directly go to the anaconda.org and click in download anaconda and come down based on your operating system and your configuration you can choose either 64 bit or 32 bit if you're not sure you can simply press windows button in your computer and or even better you could go to the my computers and say properties you will see here uh, whether it is 64-bit operating system you are using or 32-bit operating system okay. and accordingly download the corresponding one so mine is 64-bit so I'm going to download the 64-bit this is about 500 MB in my computer it's going to take a minute okay so the installation is downloaded click open it run it it's pretty much a very standard installation just say next and agree you can say just me or all users based on your preference and I normally take the defaults you don't have to change this C drive you can just take it unless you have a problem with your disk size otherwise I leave it default I leave everything default click install this is gonna take a bit time we will wait all right installation is complete click next and you can skip this and leave the defaults um, no, I don't want to learn now but if you want to you can wait in here all right now that anaconda is complete just check uh, how it is installed and how it's working go to your um, <coughs> Windows startup menu and click in anaconda there will be something called as anaconda prompt over here take that and here you type in Jupyter notebook Jupyter notebook and this will start Jupyter notebook in your browser my default browser is Chrome Google Chrome so it's gonna start off my Google Chrome Alright, so this is your Jupyter Notebook and I can open up a Jupyter I'll say import numpy one of the packages of Python as np and I can do a few more things a is equal to 3, type in a Alright, so it's working so basically we have installed Anaconda which is a package of Python and data science related Python packages many other things including Jupyter as well 
So this one installation, you, you will get ready for doing your data science coding in Jupyter. All right, so now that we have done it with Windows, just take a look at Mac as well. So this is my Mac. I'm going to just exit my, okay. And Anaconda download. Same link. If you come from Mac, it will show you Mac related installation. So this is OS Mac and it has Python 3.6 version. You download it in a similar manner we have done it in Windows and install it. So I have my Anaconda already installed. In Mac, you go to terminal, the Mac terminal and type in the same command, Jupyter Notebook. I have Chrome browser default in Mac as well. So it opens up my Chrome browser. So that's about installation. All right, so that's about quick installation. Let's get started to use Jupyter. Jupyter has many, um, you can install many kernels, like many programming language shells, uh, Python, I installed two of it, Python R, and I'm gonna show you Python. All right, and I can click here. This is a Jupyter notebook. I can click here, name this as quick, okay, quick Jupyter tutorial. Okay, a meaningful name. And this is the Jupyter interface. It will be working on your web browser. This is your Jupyter menu. You can click and look at all the options. Okay. In Jupyter, this section is called as a cell. And this is where you write down the code. Okay. And there are many types of cells. One is a code cell where you write the actual code. It might be Python or, or other languages. This is a code cell. You can click and change this cell into Markdown. What is Markdown? Markdown is for documentation. It is a trimmed down version of um, markup language. Markup language. In Markdown, I can simply say hash and a space and say, hey, this is Jupyter tutorial. Run this cell simply run the cell it becomes like an heading like a header right and you also have you know, if you put a two hash it becomes a little smaller header or simply called as heading two let mm, installation and few basics few basics and there are other uh, things in Markdown as well. You can say small iPhone, like a dash, and then write down points, like uh, keyboard shortcuts. I'm just writing some few points to me. Keyboard shortcuts, introduction, introduction, or maybe that should be top, whatever. You can also press, rather than going to cell and say run command, I can simply press Control and enter or shift and enter shift button and enter in Mac That will run the cell. Okay, and as you can see my small iPhones are turned into a nice bullet points Okay, you can also do a lot of other stuff with markdown We can do it in another session about markdown But this this is this is a markdown cell and you can go back again by default when you create a new cell or when you execute a cell Jupyter will automatically create a new cell below it, okay? And the default cell type is code. I can write Python code here and run it here itself. Let's take a very simple like assignment. A is equal to three, B is equal to five, and C is equal to A plus B. And I wanna print C, okay? I press shift and enter, voila, I got eight over here. And this section is output. Okay, and you can notice a number over here, number one, which means this is the first cell executed. 
if I do in another one like I want to print p value for example so this becomes cell 2 it's 2 in execution of sequence I can rerun the cells again and again in whatever cell I want I can go back this and rerun it so I press again shift and enter in Mac it reruns it but you can see the number 3 over here it means it's a third cell being executed in this notebook this number goes serially in, in a serial manner from 1 to how, how, how many cells being run that gives an indication of where are we and which cell has run after other cell okay if you come back to the Jupyter the, the, the home page go to the running you can see there is a notebook called quick Jupyter tutorial running and there is an option to shut it down and that is nothing but this tutorial that this notebook and this notebook is one session which means in this notebook whatever you define as a variables it's accessible within as you can see I have defined B is equal to 5 over here I have printed the B over here I got a 5 so this entire notebook is considered as one session and the variables and values are persistent within the session okay what are the other things in Jupyter well if I want to let's break it into small parts first is editing the cell you can edit the cell by just clicking the mouse there like a click or, or you can also use enter button let's say enter button enter key in the keyboard it goes into edit mode if you press an escape in the keyboard it comes back to the select mode or command mode we call it as command mode you can see that when Jupyter notebook is in command mode your cell whatever cell is selected you have a blue strip over here in the left side okay if I press and click or enter it becomes green it indicates that it's in an edit mode now okay all right that's great and how do you um, create new cells let's say I want to create more cells most of the commands work actually in command mode I mean any keyboard shortcut any command works in the command mode I press an escape all right I can uh, I can also go to the menu and say insert cell below insert cell above and uh, sorry this runs I can go to uh, so type okay here we go. insert insert cell above insert cell below but I normally don't do that it's not a standard you know, practice when you're using Jupyter I use quick keyboard keyboard shortcuts like a for above if I press an A I'm here for example if I press A I get a cell above hey this is new cell hey this is new cell okay I'm gonna make it marked down and run it okay and if I press B we get a cell below I keep on pressing B I get a lot of cells below so A for above B for below if I want to delete a cell I can select the cell uh, let's delete this one and go into command mode remember all our commands or the keyboard shortcuts works in command mode right now I'm in edit mode how do you know it I see a green and, and, a, and a blinking cursor over here I press escape in my keyboard to get into command mode and press D D for D for donkey and I press two times D then it will disappear that's just a small check you know accidentally if you press a D it the shell should not disappear so you have to press for deleting you have two times D all right or you can also go here and simply say um, let's say edit you can actually uh, cut the cell elements delete the cells undo the cell deleted I can press it again and it will come back you can use this but typically I use uh, keyboard shortcut D for deleting a cell and there are lots of other shortcuts which you can explore yourself by going over here and this is a you know there's a small keyboard icon over here after this selection of this code or markdown you can go and click this and see a lot of commands to navigate to delete to edit to undo and to paste cells etc you can explore this by yourself okay and for running this notebook you can run the entire cells just in one go using 
run all. Run all will run everything from top to bottom. And there are also options to run all the cells above the correct uh, current selected cell. For example, if I am here, I can select this option, run all above. It will run all the things above my cell. If I select run below, and obviously it will run all the cells, run all the cells below my selected cells. Okay. And this is good enough to start and I'm pretty sure this is very intuitive and user friendly. Play with it and you will get to know uh, uh, how to how to use it. And if your notebook gets really messy with a lot of outputs, you can simply clean it up saying output all outputs clear. So all my output cells will be cleared. Remember this is not an output. This is one of the cell we have. It's a markdown, markdown cell. When you select the cell, you'll see here whether it's a markdown or a code cell. We also have two other modes like raw notebook and uh, heading. Heading is just simple heading which can be also done in your markdown cell. So I normally don't use it. Ra when you select raw, whatever you are writing down in the cell will not be processed. It is not considered as markdown, not as a code, nothing. It just remains the same. Let me just show you what I mean. You select this one, you write something. Hey, this is raw content. Do not, don't process it. process it okay and you press shift enter nothing happens whatever you have written it is it is there but in case of markdown I can um, you know I can do some things and here if, if I do some coding or whatever nothing happens it is not processed okay I typically don't use raw I use markdown for my documentation code for heading if I have a very small comment about a code let's say I'm adding these two stuff I don't create a markdown cell for you but I use a inbuilt Python comment character which is asterisk and I can say I am simply this is this is simple addition of two variables and I run the cell and this line is being ignored because it is marked as a comment a Python comment okay all right so uh, you can save it automatically saves in every uh, five minutes or so the, that configuration can be changed and you can actually go ahead and manually save it save and checkpoint you can also use keyboard shortcut control s in Windows or command s in Mac that will also save the file just like you save any other documents like especially if you're using Microsoft suite like Microsoft Word the same commands work and the commands such as control Z which is to undo for example hey and I press control Z in Windows in, in Mac you press command Z it will undo and again if you press control Y or command Y in Mac it will redo it so it is very similar to your Word document a Microsoft Word document so it will be very easy for you to actually navigate okay that's a quick start on Jupyter tutorial as a Jupyter notebook as we go on I will introduce a few more uh, nicer things which will make your coding experience much better all right that's it hope this video helps you to get started with Jupyter notebook and thanks for watching I'll see you on another video